Welcome, everybody, to the Nosebleed Sports Podcast. I'm Chris Witt. With me, as always, is Mr. Adam Schmidt. Uh, and, of course, today, we're two days away from opening day in Cincinnati. And it wouldn't be an opening day with the Nosebleed Sports Podcast if we didn't have the man, the myth, and the legend, Cincinnati Inquirer, Reds beat writer, USA Today, Mr. Bobby Nightingale Jr. How are you, sir? Doing well. I but I I can't take the the man myth and legend. I think Adam Baum passed me when Xavier went on the run this year. No chance. I've never called him man myth or legend. You're the only one. (laughs) You're the only one. You're the only one. Adam is a. We love Adam here because he's a Panther like we are. Uh, But I mean, his only claim to fame is he was a bullpen catcher in high school. You know what I mean? I mean, you were trained. By Barry Bonds' doctor, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't. Ha- I don't have Clement. Like I need a Clementine. That's like my. I'm missing that. <laughs> what do you, you gotta, make a different? You got something different. You got to have something different that every time somebody sees you, you got it sitting right next to the computer. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. All I have is my bad Twitter photos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love your Twitter photos. There's nothing wrong with those. So, so when you are when you're at a game and you're out there typing during the game do you have do you, are you uh do you got a snack with you usually no not just a water probably but that's about it that's about it you don't partake in the do they still after covid do they still do the the press box food yeah they do yeah okay that's the bad be the best part right is that the best part of being in the press box is the food well, it's still like you're still paying for it, and so it's hit or miss. I mean, some ballparks like Philadelphia is really good, and that's the first road trip. So, like that's yeah. a perk. But the, the, there's some bad ones where it's like you're basically eating a school lunch. It feels like. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, JT Real Muto doesn't get kicked out of the game uh, <laughs> in the fourth inning for no reason at all. Uh, that was weird. That was very weird. Before we get into all, I'm not going to get into that. Obviously, you're here to talk Reds baseball. Uh, and of course, we'll probably throw some other goofy stuff at you as we go. But um, let's just get started and kick it off, man. Opening day is Thursday. Uh, what what are what can we expect from this team? I think they'll be a little bit better defensively, a little bit better running the bases than they were, which were two huge weaknesses last year. Um, they'll probably hit worse than they did, at least before the trade deadline last year. I mean, you're missing a lot of – you have Will Myers, who they signed in the offseason. But other than that, you're missing a lot of the guys you traded in the lineup. And, um, you know, even Vado's hurt and um, Senzel's out. So, I mean, you're miss- you, you, know, you don't have your full team yet. But it's also probably going to be – they're not going to hit a ton of homers this year. I mean, they're going to have to play some small ball to, to win some games. Uh, starting pitching is probably a little bit better than it was at the beginning of last year because Castillo was hurt. Tyler Malley had a really rough start to the year. And then you have the three young guys. All those guys sh- should be theoretically better than they were, especially at the beginning of last year. Um, they all had a good spring training. So that's something to take comfort in. And then the bullpen, I, I get a lot of questions about the bullpen, but, um, you know, they, they don't have a lot of like proven guys, but they, they have a lot more experience than they probably have had. And, recent years like before they'd go with a lot of young guys now it's a lot of older guys who you know I don't I don't think fans get excited about like Buck Farmer and Ian Jabot and Derek Law pitching in high leverage situations but all those guys have kind of done it in their careers um maybe maybe not Jabot to a degree because he he doesn't have a ton of time in the majors but um you know Fernando Cruz is technically a rookie and he's been around for 10-15 years in different leagues so a lot of older guys, maybe not the high upside they had in the past, but guys who should know what they're doing. Yeah, you're, you had a couple articles in the paper today, uh, and one was on the relievers. And I'm not going to lie to you, outside of Buck Farmer, I don't know that I heard of any of those guys. <laughs> but yeah, that's not I mean, a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. Yeah, I mean, it's just I, I think part of it's just the nature of relievers. Like nobody knew who Alexis Diaz was at the beginning of last year, and now, um, you know, you, you, easily their closer, pr- probably their best reliever. Um, same thing a couple of years ago, like no one knew who TJ Antone was before TJ Antone kind of came out. So um, I, I think it's just kind of a year to year thing. 
Um, Lucas Sims should be back at some point and um, he, he's pitched in some of the biggest games and, you know, pitched in both 2020 playoff games, brings that type of experience. Um, Tony Santiano will be healthy at some point. So um, they'll, they'll get some guys back that are probably more familiar, but relievers are so fickle that, you know, it, it so much depends on just who has a hot month and who doesn't. All right. So, and we'll probably circle back around with pitching again, but uh, so starting in, and, and I'm, I'm thinking maybe we just go around the field real quick. Number one, you already mentioned that Joey Votto is starting the year on the injury list. Um, 10 day list. So after 10 days, you think he's back? That sounds like the, that's the goal. Um, I mean, for him, it's just getting more innings and he'll be able to do that in a rehab assignment. So I would think so. Okay. So then while he's out, who do you anticipate playing most of the time at first? Uh, Jason Vossler, um, another left-handed corner infielder guy. Um, that's kind of, that's kind of his role. I, I could see Tyler Stevenson will get some time there. Will Myers might start a game or two there. Um, but Vossler, I mean, if he's on the team, which it looks like he is, um, you know, that's, that's got to be his job. I mean, otherwise, I don't know where else he fits on the roster. So he, he's probably your starting first baseman uh, on Thursday. Definitely open to uh, anybody new that I don't know. Got to keep an open mind, right? But I was kind of hoping to hear that Tyler Stevenson would play first and Kirk Casale would catch, but that's the way it goes. Is the Casale the, – let's go – backwards around the horn let's go from first to catcher is Casale uh is he going to be hooked up with any specific pitchers or is it going to be a platoon effect how how's the Casale Stevenson thing look like it's going to go yeah I mean they'll do three catchers so uh Luke Maley from Covington's in there too um Stevenson will only catch like twice a week uh, they're really going to limit him more DH um in my head, I almost think of him as a starting DH who's going to catch a lot. Um, gotcha. They, they just want him to be in the lineup. I mean, he's their best pure hitter. So, um, and if you yeah. catch five days a week, you almost have to take the night game, day game after a night game off, just physically, you know, you're going to yeah. wear down. Um, so, Casale and Maley, will, I, I think it'll you know, be close to an even split um, for those two. I mean, I'm sure one of them will get a pitcher that they really connect with and that'll they'll have their personal uh, pitcher that they work with. And, you know, maybe one of them runs into a hot streak for two weeks and becomes a starter for two weeks and they rotate that way. Um, but it, I, I think of it more as like Stevenson will catch twice a week and then the other two will figure out the five days from there uh, the rest of the week. All right. Uh, which way you want to go from there? Let's go to, let's, let's go over to third. Uh, what, what's what I feel like that's an intriguing spot on the field. There's quite a few infielders uh, looking at that third short second positioning. Yeah, I think it'll be Spencer Steer at third. Um, you saw him last September. Um, came over in the Tyler Malley trade. Good hitter. Um, probably has more power than most people think. So um, they're going to give him every chance to be the everyday third baseman. Obviously, I have Jonathan India at second. And then I, I think it'll be Jose Barrero, your starting shortstop to begin the year um, with Kevin Newman as his backup. Um, Barrero, Barrero, I mean, it was kind of his job to lose in spring training, I thought, going into it. And he, he showed enough. I mean, he, he still struck out probably more than he should. But his defense is like on a whole different level. Um, like he's the defense he showed in spring training, like that's gold glove caliber if he can keep that up during the season. Yeah, you're, you had a couple articles where it just kind of broke down a few different players and what they were doing for about spring. And uh, that was the whole Barrero. Every time it just seemed kind of like it's Barrero's job to lose and there's no one stepping up to the plate to take it from him. Not that he's overwhelmingly winning it, just nobody's really pushing him out of the way is the way that I kind of got out of that. Yeah, I mean, he did, he did it enough, um, especially defensively. He's He's better than anyone. Kevin, Kevin Newman's a good defender, but uh, Barrero, I mean, when he's at his best, more range, stronger arm, um, he, he can do a lot. So um, if he can just hit, I mean, I'm sure he'll hit at the bottom of the order to begin the year, um, cut down on the strikeouts. He's still a guy, like in the minor leagues, he led the farm system in homers two years ago. Um, so he, he has some serious pop. Yeah, when he gets into it, it's good. It's just a whole lot of swing and miss. Yeah. And, it, and nobody's going to throw a fastball, so. 
you can see it a little bit improved. Like at least he's hitting mistakes. Like a, a pitcher hangs a slider. He's at least hitting those now. Whereas I feel like last year he was still missing those. Mm -hmm. Obviously if someone throws a great slider, few hitters are going to do anything with it anyway. So it's yeah. like, okay, you just got to learn how to hit the mistakes. And I feel like he's shown that at least at the end of spring, um, started doing that a lot better. Good. Uh, outfield then let's go to the outfield. Let's, uh, We've got five outfielders, it seems like. Uh, am I wrong in that situation? It feels like a five -way. I mean, it's going to be a lot of platooning. Everybody's going to see time out there. Yeah, I think that's – Will Myers is probably your only everyday guy. He'll start every day in right field, um, kind of like Tommy Pham did last year where he was kind yeah. of the one guy always playing. Jake Fraley will start against right-handed pitching in left field probably, um, in DH probably some. Um, they still haven't named – the outfielder to pair with him like Henry Ramos just got cut from camp he would have been a guy um if they don't add anybody Stuart Fairchild still on the 40-man roster he got put he got sent to minor league camp maybe a week and a half ago but um he's still on the 40-man roster so it would make sense if um they don't add anyone it would be him and he's a right-handed hitter um so you have him and Fraley and left and then uh Will Benson and uh TJ Friedel are both left-handed hitters I think Friedel's probably got the edge to start the season in center. Um, and then Will Benson, either he'll play left field or he'll DH um, when he's not in center. And then if they if they want to do a right-handed center fielder, it's going to be Barrero. Really? Yeah, he started, he started playing there. Senzel, yeah. When Senzel comes back, where, where does he fit into the whole mix? I think he'll share time in center, um, like with Friedel or Benson, whoever the hot hand is. Um, he'll probably share, share time there. And then it'll be kind of your – you can start at third base, can start at second. Um, not like a utility – easy. he'll be a super utility guy, um, but he'll start a lot of games. It's just, right. you know, give Steer a day off at third base, give India a day off at second, um, and play center when you're not doing that. So um, he'll, he'll play a lot of infield. I, I love that. I mean, we had Farmer doing that for a while. You know, he was starting wherever he played. He was, he, he was a good, good enough to start. I got I got a little Swiss Army knife on my ten year old baseball team, man. I can stick that kid anywhere. I love him. He's you know he's not my best anywhere, but he's good everywhere you put him. It, it's it's nice to have a little somebody like that. It's nice. I like that. Uh, all right, starting pitching. I'm it, everything. Every story I read, it seems like you or Gold, Goldsmith are writing about Graham Ashcraft. Is he? Did he have a better spring than Lodolo and Hunter or did it just seem like, or is it just more surprising that he had such a good spring? Cause I, I feel like that's the only guy I read about in the paper. Yeah, probably more surprising. I mean, green's still green, great sure. fastball, great slider. Lodolo still Lodolo. Um, but Ashcraft slider is like, gets crazy swing and miss now. And last year, I mean, he's, he had a fine rookie season, but it was like a lot of ground balls, uh, a lot of like broken bats, jam shots, but he didn't strike out many guys. I think he only had one start where he struck out like more than six or seven guys. Um, and now he's like a guy who could strike out like nine or 10 guys you could see in a game. And if that, if that carries over to the regular season, I mean, that's a, a guy who throws cutters, gets a ton of ground balls and strikes them out. I mean, that's like picture perfect for great American ballpark too. Absolutely. You ain't kidding me. Absolutely. So you had kind of those three guys, almost locks, especially after Graham Ashcraft started pitching so well. The last two spots, though, were up for grabs for a few guys, right? Um, and, you know, a couple of days ago, they named those guys. Um, what can we – Luis Sessa and Connor – Overton. Overton, thank you. Just lost it. Um what can we expect out of those guys? Are they true four and five guys? They're going to be like just kind of doing just enough to keep you in the game. And, you know, they're never going to be great. Or there might be some other guys that come from the bullpen if they're not working out well and they kind of rotate. Or what do you expect in those two spots? Yeah, I mean, I think they'll get be both be given rope. Um, like Overton, he only made like five starts maybe last year, pitched 33 innings. Um, but it was really good. I mean, especially when the team was like three and 22 during the start, uh, their start to the year, he was like the one good starting pitcher they had um, in early May when everyone else was struggling and no one was pitching five innings. He was the one guy that actually went six. Um, 
he's not a guy who strikes out a ton of guys, but he throws five, six, seven pitches. Um, so he keeps a lot of guys off balance. He has to throw strikes. Um, you know, not, not the upside of the three young guys, but um, if he pitches as expected, I mean, the Reds liked what they saw last year. Um, and then Sessa, he went from reliever to starter at the end of last year when they didn't have any starters left. Um, it, it, he did fine. I mean, it was one of those, it's a hard thing to do at the end of a season or any time during the season. Um, going from a guy who's throwing, preparing to throw every day to a five day routine and, uh, building up your pitch count that way. Um, so I'll, I'll be curious to see how he looks. I mean, this is, I, I thought it was, it said a lot about Sessa when, uh, Mexico went to the semifinal for the world baseball classic. Uh, obviously a dream to compete for your country. They advanced that far. I mean, you're that close to the championship. Um, and he called the Reds and said, Hey, I, I want to come back. Um, and he, he left early so he could win a spot in the starting rotation. Wow. Yeah. I didn't even realize that. That's I didn't awesome. realize that either. I watched a lot of the world. Ba- I watched way more world baseball classic than I did spring training, which is usually not the right. Same for me. I love spring training. I'll watch a, I'll watch whatever's on MLB Network, uh, whatever game they got. If it's, you know, it doesn't Our matter. Marlins, so, Orioles. And yeah, I don't lot. care. Yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. But I didn't watch a lot this year, but the WBC was amazing. Were you able to watch? Uh, were you able to get into a lot of WBC this year? Not a ton. Like, I, I was able to see, like, short spurts. I think the championship was that the Reds had an off day that day. So that was like the only game I saw from start to finish. But that's the best, like, that, that's the best game to see. That game was awesome. Yeah. And I remember seeing a lot of the I'm trying to remember who uh Japan versus Mexico. Um that game was crazy too, the ending. Mm-hmm. The walk off yeah. hit. Yep. Yep. Randy Rosarena and the whole that whole day. Yeah, yeah. Great. It's great baseball. And they kept talking about how great it was for baseball. Baseball obviously has been getting uh bad raps for being too slow and being an old man's game to watch. Well, here we are. The rules are here. Bobby, we've had this conversation quite a few times, bud. I'm not like there's there are things that are growing on me. Okay, I totally I love the DH. I uh, I love the universal DH. Great with that. Uh, I I hate old man softball starting extra innings with a man on second base. Um, the pitch clock is growing on me. I I. I guess this is my question because I want to get into the pitch clocks. I've got other questions about rule changes too, but the pitch clock's the one. Uh, did they learn anything from spring training that will change going? Because they're very strict. I mean, it was. I mean, there was at least one pitch clock violation per game. Is was it? It was like one point oh three. You you wrote about it, something like that in the uh, during spring training. That seems, it seems like that's a lot. I, just one seems like too many for me. Free balls and free strikes. I hate that. Really do. I get that you have to have something as a consequence, but how lenient is this going to be? I mean, we had a game that ended on a strikeout because the guy wasn't in the box. I mean, or wasn't paying, whatever it was. It's, it, tell me your take on it how you feel it went in spring and how you feel it's going to change or continue in the season. Yeah. I mean, they're still going to be strict about it. Um, There's like some nuances that they've kind of cleared up like umpire discretion in terms of like a catcher is the last out and you know, there's, they can give them extra time to come out for the next inning instead of him having to sprint out and um, two and a half minutes, get all your gear on. Yeah. They've clarified some of that stuff, but they're still going to call it. I mean, if you're at, if it's the ninth inning through two count and the hitter's not ready, a game could still end on that. And um, I'm sure you're going to hear a lot more player complaint. Like no one really complained about it in spring training. Um, but the first time a team loses a game on it, I'm sure it'll be the headlines of, you know, national headlines for a day or two. And it was um, the Braves. Was it the Braves? We talked about this on the podcast that it happened to. And, and the catcher was standing up, apparently. Like, the catcher wasn't ready. Is there any rule for the catcher that has to be ready or, or show he's ready? I mean, is there anything that moved from that? Because that irritated me a little bit. I mean, why is the, pit, why is the batter got to be ready if the catcher's not ready? Yeah, I mean, the, the catcher has – I mean, the hitter has to be ready with eight seconds left. The pitcher has until zero seconds left to throw. Yeah. Um, so it's on the hitter to be ready first because, you know, the, in theory – 
a hitter can't step in the box with one second left, and then the pitcher has to throw it immediately. I totally get that. But if a batter's sitting here and he's in the box, he's just not in a stance, and the catcher's not even down in the squat yet, then nobody's I mean, nothing's going to happen. Now you're going to make – it just seems like a long time to have to stand there. I, I'm not going to get into I'm not going to get into all that because <laughs> I I play old man forever, but I gotta say, looking at the average time of game, 25 minutes. I mean, roughly is like what 23 minutes is the difference in the average. That's a lot of time, man. That's a big difference. You're talking about three hours to less than three hours. That makes a big difference. I I I'm okay with the pitch clock. Well, what I always tell people is that 25 minutes. It's like it's not less action i mean you're still nope. everything the else exact same amount. it's just guys not stepping out of the box pitchers walking around the mound i mean you just kind of took out the the stuff no one watches anyway all right so here's the here's my other one uh and, and you saw a lot of baseball if i'm a if i'm if i'm a base runner i uh i i feel like you definitely have got an advantage I mean, the base is like, you know, I mean, it's like seven inches bigger. So <laughs> that seems silly to me. But there are a lot of really close plays that are bang, bang. So those will be more stolen bases, stuff like that. I get it. But the only I can only I can only pick off. I can only pick uh, try to pick you off twice. I mean, that gives an enormous advantage to the runner. I mean, you're almost running before he. If you take off before he sets, he can step off and throw at you if you're stealing, right? So, but that's still such a huge advantage. You almost cannot pick, you cannot attempt to pick somebody off twice unless you know you're getting. Yeah. I mean, it, there are advantages to being the runner. I mean, some of, I mean, the, no one, no one's said they do this. Um, but in theory, a runner could look at the pitch clock too and be like, it's two, one, like they Help. have to throw or pick yeah. off. I mean, they have to do something. Um, so, I mean, that should help. But I mean, baseball should have more stolen bases. I mean, like the last few years, yeah. like the Reds leaders are like nine or 10 stolen bases. Like, yeah. I hits totally agree. Again. I love, I love more stolen bases. I'm good with it. I, it just seems like it's a head. I, I still feel like if I'm a pitcher, if I want to throw at you three times over there, I should be allowed to. I don't know. Two seats. Well, you can throw over the third time, um, attempt a third pickoff. It's just if you don't get them, it's a balk. Um, but it, you can do it legitimately. Um, so, I mean, the, the say they throw over twice, the runner, say they could have a more aggressive lead. Well, you're still prone to, like, probably easier to get picked off that way, too. Um, sure. So, there's, so there's, there's still, still like, a cat and mouth to it. I mean, basically, if you're going to – he's getting a huge lead, you either try to pick him off that third time or he's stealing second anyway, so – yeah, no loss. Yeah. Yeah, no loss. There. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. You're helping me out. Have there have you seen more stolen bases in spring training with all this? I mean, there were, but it's also like if you get thrown out in spring, no one really cares. Um right. so I'll be curious. I think it'll some of it'll carry over to the regular season, but like the Reds were like top three in stolen bases in the entire spring training. I don't know if they'll steal that much. Um uh, yeah. just because they, they haven't been a base stealing team in the past, but um it should be at least a little bit of an increase i would think nice nice yeah i don't know i mean we covered the infield the outfield oh the starting staff the bullpen mm -hmm. um the rule changes what else you got i i want to know uh we've got a lot there's a lot of guys on this bench you already said that tyler stevenson is going to be your main dh um you're 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 good. We've got the entire lineup kind of talked about so far. You're sitting in the press box. Who's your main man to your right and left? Um, I think it's C. Trent to my left and Charlie to my right. I believe. And is that pretty much everywhere you go? Is it like y'all just? That's not assigned seating, right? You just kind of go down there, pick your spot, and go. At home, at home, it's assigned, and then on the road, it's there's like a visitor section where we sit anywhere, and um, like Charlie and I, same paper. We never, we're never on the road together, um, so I'll never sit with him on in a road trip. And then um, Trent and Mark Sheldon, they, they don't travel to everywhere, um, so sometimes you know, sometimes I'm by myself, sometimes we're all three of us are there. Um, so it depends on the road. I got you. So you're not with the other guys from like the other teams. 
Uh, we are. I mean, same press box, just uh, uh, usually just, a different row. I got you. I got you. I got you. Uh, best press box in baseball. San Francisco to, to watch a game. They're like the yeah. closest to the field. Um, nice. It's like second second deck, I guess, or second kind of like the sweet level, but straight yeah. behind home plate. Um, almost kind of like right above the lower bowl of fans. Okay. I like it. Uh, oh, man, I'll tell you. Uh, there, <sighs> opening day coming up. You have now been through – Three opening days, is that right? You here, uh, this I think this would be number five. Jeez, wow, that's really fun. <laughs> Every time I ask a question like that, I realize we've been doing this podcast for a long time. Uh, all right, so five opening days, and I believe we talked to you at your first opening day. Uh, I think, so. I think that's right, yeah, yeah. So, I want to say that one, or at least one other one, Adam. Adam Baum did the game with you, was there. Yeah, that's right. Game. Will he be there with you this week? I'm not sure. I've been asked. Um, it's a good question. Usually, usually we have extra people there. Um, is that just like, is that just like, hey, I want to go to the game. Give me an extra pass. Like, he's not really writing. He's not doing any B writing on the Reds. <laughs> What's, he's supposed to be an opening day, right? I mean, that's no, he's right. I saw Sean Miller at the opening day. He's a, I, mean, I mean, come on. He's a West Sider. He's doing everything he can to sneak, sneak into wherever he can get into. I'm going to use that press pass if I can. We need a story on uh, bullpen catchers and their histories. So yeah, yeah it was, absolutely. <laughs> I want out if you, if you by chance see him, uh, let them know that Chris and Adam with the nosebleeds, we want a story about the bullpen catcher and how he can relate to them. <laughs> I would love that. Oh, man. That's awesome. uh, good. Um, no, so you guys got a lot of, it's a lot of fanfare. You're, you're on your fifth one. Two of them were kind of sketchy because of COVID. Uh, Three of them. Cause you, like 20 was messed up. 21 was small attendance. And last year was uh because the lockout they started on the road, so like the home, oh, the home that's right. I forgot about that. Okay, so are you? Do you look forward to these games where there's a lot of fanfare and stuff, or is it more difficult for you, like to get in and out of the stadium? Is it is it a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, from a media perspective, it's different just because everyone's there, like every TV station and radio. The radio, there's a lot of radio people, like they're not there most days. Um, so, I mean, from that perspective, it's like it's worse in terms of access and, um, you know, it, it's kind of a, a special event on its own. But, it, I mean, a sold out stadium is a sold out stadium. Um, yeah, that's I mean, cool. That's that part. Yeah, that part's cool. It's the behind the scenes stuff that I would think would be terrible because you got a million people around you that are never there. And they probably are trying to big time everybody because they think there's somebody. And it's like, yo, hey. You see that name on the plate right there? That's Bobby Nightingale Jr., bro. That's my <laughs> spot. Every day. <laughs> but just one of those, it's just like. Game. I got to sit through this team all year. <laughs> <laughs> it's just such a difference, like game two. It's like, okay, this is everyone yeah. left. <laughs> Here we are. And even Back in the, the crowd, game. too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, opening night. <laughs> yeah, opening night. Um, I, I just love the opening day stuff. So you've got opening day. You've got all the craziness, all the fans there. Um, but, but for you, is there a difference in how, like, do you get there earlier just so you can get to talk to people? Cause you said it's hard to kind of get to people because there's so many, do you have a player or a guy like Joey Votto has been around for a while that when something like this goes down, they'll kind of gravitate and give you your time, make sure you get your time. No, I mean, this is more like formal sit at a press conference type day versus, reporters in the clubhouse and getting one-on-ones or anything like that yeah. um this is definitely more buttoned up um kind of like in say tournament like uh, you, you have your, your podium guys yeah yeah who's your go-to in the locker room i need a story who's your go-to guy yeah i lost a lot of them from all the trades over the last year and a half two years yeah. uh lost a lot of those guys like um you know, like Tucker Barnhart was our media good guy award winner. Amir Garrett won it. Um, Kyle nice. Farmer won it last year. So it's like all, all the guys we've designated is like, oh, this guy's been the most helpful to the gone. media. Gone. Yeah. <laughs> so Joey Votto never won that? 
I feel like Bob is not a fun uh, guy. I, I guess he's him. not as playful, right? He's not going to be playful with it. He's very. I mean, he's a playful guy, but if you're going to ask him a question about baseball, he gets real technical about it with his answers. Yeah, he got in in 21. Um, okay. I remember during like the home run streak he had, I think it was seven yeah. games in a row. He spoke every day after that, um, which was pretty impressive. I mean, some guys get tired after like talking two days in a row, and he did it for a week straight. Um, so he got it that year. Um, not that he's bad with the meter or anything. He's just, you know. Yeah, what does that award entail? Who votes? Usually it's like, like, vote for that? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's all the local beat writers. Um, to me, it's like, okay, your team just lost 15 to zero. Nobody, obviously no one wants to talk to the media about a 15 to zero loss, but who's going to be the one guy that steps up and is like, you know, I'll take one for right. the team. I'll, yep. you know. Let me give you all my coaches' speech real quick here. And uh, right, yeah, you know, we got another one tomorrow. We got to put it behind us, bury the tape, blah 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 blah. Yeah. But say like you're in a seven game losing streak, you just got swept or something, and say you lose on a walk off, guys are pissed off. Who's going to be the one guy that's still going to talk and still be, you know, cordial about it and not, yeah. you know, because there there are times, you know, losing streaks, walk off losses, all that. There will be guys that are, you know, I'm I'm not talking today, um, yeah. you know understandably i mean you're frustrated um Absolutely. but you know we still have a job to do who's the guys that we can go to that are still gonna kind of step up yeah without naming them obviously are there any guys in the locker room maybe in the past that aren't there anymore that you avoided because they're just so impersonable like you're like this guy's almost kind of rude because he hates dealing with the media is there anybody like that i wouldn't say there was anyone that like was so at least in my time i mean i've heard stories from guys before i started that um yep. were that way i don't think anyone's been like contentious with the media and like there's we're gonna butt heads anytime we talk but um i mean there were guys that like matt kemp was not the most friendly like he did not make himself available very often um yeah. week was not you had to catch him in the right mood type deal i mean there there was Matt Harvey, kind of the same thing. So, I mean, there were there were yeah. some guys that, not they were contentious or anything, but they weren't they weren't the type that you were going to chat around with when they weren't being interviewed yeah. or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. Is it like the old days? Like you hear all the time about like the old days, like Johnny Bench would go have a beer with a beat writer, and it's like, all right, this is all off the record, you know, whatever, and and you're just having a beer, hanging out, or is it pretty much, I'm here to do a job, you're here to do a job. I mean, it's a lot of big money guys now, right? Like it's a, I mean, it's two totally different tiers of, of lifestyles now. So I, I feel like it's got to be different, right? It's not like that anymore. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty professional, I would say. Um, I mean, you can, you get to know some guys. I mean, you're covering them for like 200 days out of the year and you see them every day. So, I mean, it's, you develop relationships with people, but it's not, you know, I, I I'm not going after games to get beers with you know, a top Johnny Bench or anybody. Um, no, or even like a, like a, <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, even them, I mean, I, I can't remember. I can't think of anyone that comes to mind. That'd be like, Oh yeah, we got a meal together or even drinks or anything. Um, yeah. A lot of players don't drink. I mean, they drink, but they don't drink publicly. Like it's one of those yeah, camera of forms. I think changed a lot of things. And there ain't no doubt stuff. about that. Social media and everything has changed all of that. So. And guys take care so much better care of their bodies now than they used to. Um, yeah. And that, that's a big part of it, too. Yeah. yeah. You I don't have any Mickey Mantles walking around. The- <laughs> yeah, I remember Barry, our Barry uh, uh, Brandon Phillips, when they, when, they won the, when they won the Central, and they're champagne, and he said, this is the first time I've ever had a drop of alcohol. Yeah. Wow. I, uh, I don't, I never know if he's being serious or not, but I always thought that was, that was kind of different. That's just a, a, a take on how people are. Um, Bobby, I don't want to keep you too long, man. Uh, it's already late. We got started late. I apologize for that because uh, I am – our producer's out. Our producer's out. Uh, he's on <laughs> spring break. So uh, – and, and the, the audio may not be perfect. I apologize for that too. Uh, I'm the backup producer, and it is no good. And by backup producer, I mean the producer and the backup producer. Uh, and so – I like the backup a lot more than the, the regular. So Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. 100%. 100%. Uh, 
Anything else going on in your life? What do you got coming out? You got any big stories you're working on? Like one of those, I love the, the, like the, the month, three month, four month long build up stories that you, those get seem to get riders really excited. Do you got yeah. anything big coming? Um, got one on Jose Barrero that I think comes out tomorrow. Um, nice. one on Jeff Brantley that'll come out eventually. Um, excited about that one. Yeah, I think people will like that one. Um, and then there's one I've been working on for like two years, and we'll, it, it's not coming out soon, so I don't want to okay. hype it up or anything. But um, okay, okay, I like it. I like it. Hope it comes out well. Awesome, awesome. I'm sure they will. Everything you write comes out great. Uh, you can catch Bobby. Uh, like I said, if you're like me and you're old and you still get a newspaper, you can get it in print form. Uh, he's also got many more stories because I feel like Charlie gets gets a uh, gets a little gets a little more of the the front page stuff on the Reds more than you do. I'm starting to get a little irritated. Like my guy's <laughs> not getting he's not getting the pub the push that we need. Same with Adam. I, like I, read, I read it online, so I don't see a front page. Oh, see, I got this is the only guy <laughs> left in the world to get some newspaper. <laughs> Seriously, I, say, when I first started getting the newspaper like. There was at least 10 of them down my street. Now, I mine's the only one I ever see. I don't see anybody else. Anybody You're else. the guy. <laughs> the, I'm the one guy that the guy who's delivering it's pissed off because he's got to come down my street to deliver it. Uh, but no, look, Adam's the same way because, I mean, Xavier had a great run this year. They're really good. And every day with the sports page, I'm reading about this terrible UC team. And there's nothing <laughs> on Xavier. And it's if you re- want to go to read about Xavier, go to inquire.com. I'm like, what? I, I don't want to go there. I want to read it in my paper in the morning. Anyway, I feel like Xavier and you, you and Adam need more pub in the, uh, in the, in the in, <laughs> I need more front page stuff. I need, I need, I need more. So I'm excited about the Barrero story tomorrow. See, I was in, I was in Arizona, so I didn't even see the front page. Like it's news to me now. <laughs> yeah. There That's you right. go. There you go. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's right. not, I shouldn't say front page. I'm just on the sports. Like, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, you guys all both will have like two stories every day, but I, I just, just feel like old Charlie's on that, on, on the first. I need, I need my boy Bobby on that front. I'll, have <laughs> you, I'll, I'll, I'm, I got, I got you taken care of. You should call and complain. You should call on a rotary telephone. Listen, to to <laughs> I get a printed out newspaper. Do you know who this point. is? This is Chris Witt. Oh, the one guy that still gets a paper? Yeah. The one guy. <laughs> this is what I want. This is what I need in my in my paper. I'm going to uh, I'm going to make my paper my way. Anyway, Bobby. So, oh, sorry. The, the Xavier thing is a great transition for the very last thing we'll do with Bobby. <gasps> God, yes. Number one, yes. have you gotten to watch any while you're down and while you're in Arizona? Watch any NCAA tournament? Yeah, watch. Uh, not as much as I usually do, but um, I'm a huge college basketball fan. Um, but here, here and there. I mean, I see the big games clips. And I actually, this was a total coincidence, but I forgot that we had talked to you about this before. You said yeah. you're a Duke guy, right? You're a Duke fan. I am, yeah. We, we decided last week before we even talked to you that we were going to make our Mount Rushmore this week, Duke basketball players. So do you have a Mount Rushmore, a top four, favorite or best, however you do it, Duke basketball players. Yeah, I do. Um, please, please, whatever you do, don't put Sheldon Williams on. I don't want to hear Sheldon Williams' name come up. I love Sheldon Williams. Sheldon Williams broke my heart oh, yeah. <laughs> as a Xavier fan when, when uh, uh, what was his name? Now I can't remember the guy's name. Uh, Hicks. Anthony Hicks. Oh. He uh he get four fouls, gets four fouls with like five minutes ago. He's shutting down Sheldon Williams in the Elite Eight, and Thad Mata doesn't take him out of the game, leaves him in after he after he fouls for his fourth foul on the box out, fifth foul out for the game. Sheldon Williams has like eight points in the last three minutes, and Duke ends up beating us and he was just shutting Williams down that whole game. So I don't want to hear any Sheldon Williams. It's okay if you got Sheldon Williams on there. Go ahead. I know he wasn't don't. on there, but this is this is for this is specifically for the nosebleed podcast. My my like oh, one oh, let's go. <laughs> Tyree. Uh number two. Just which just all number two is 
Yeah, so I'll take like Jay Williams, who's on my Mount Rushmore, number two. There you go. I forgot that Jay Williams was number two. Or was was uh, Kyrie two or was he one at Duke? I think he was one. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's, yeah. that's bringing it up now. Okay, um, so you have Jay right. Williams. Jay Will. All right, I, I so love I'm that. only going big, with guys. Big ESPN guy. I love I love listening to him in the morning. He's a lot of fun. So I'm only going with guys that I watched, which takes Perfect. out like the Grant Hills and Christian Leitners, who it's great players. Your, but I didn't it's see them. your Mount Rushmore. We always say that it's out your Mount Rushmore. Whoever you want to put on, not the greatest of all time, Bobby Nightingale's Mount Rushmore. Okay, so so Jay Williams. J.J. Redick, who's my all-time favorite Duke player. Also a great commentator these days. Absolutely. Yep. My favorite one and done, Zion Williamson. Oh, okay. Kind of, you know, the one guy I will watch, I will go out of my way to watch play in the NBA. And then last one is Quinn Cook, senior point guard. Um, yeah. Was there all four years, won a yep. championship last year. Yeah. Complete leader. Love, love guys like that. There's not a lot of them, especially at places like Duke. And when you get a guy like that, that's I, that's that's a great that's a great Mount Rushmore. I love the JJ Redick. Uh, love the JJ Redick because that's what you know. Duke's got the Leitner, the Redick, the who was the other kid? Uh, Grayson Allen. Grayson Allen, guys like that. When JJ Redick's reading poetry on ESPN in college, talking <laughs> about how he's a, he writes poetry and stuff, and then he comes out. And I absolutely loved him in the NBA. Loved him in the NBA. His podcast is awesome. Uh, he's I, that's that's great, dude. That's perfect. Yeah. I love it. Very good. Adam, you want to go next, bud? Let's go. Let's see sure. what you got. Adam yeah. has so this is how Adam does all Mount Rushmore's. He'll pick two, and then he'll have forty-five people written down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, literally, sure. <laughs> that's the whole page of names. Um. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go. I'll, I'll just go. JJ Redick. I put him on there too. Um, very polarizing guy. Anybody that did not like Duke hated JJ Redick. But that was shortly before he got there. I think I started to come around because the Laker days hated Duke. Yes, because of Christian Laker. Having said that, I go JJ Redick. I go Grant Hill, who I didn't care for then because I didn't. I just thought all of Duke was terrible because uh, of a guy like Christian Lake. Because you, know, you feel about Christian Lake, yeah. because I hated Bobby Hurley too. I couldn't stand Same. Bobby Hurley, but I just like <laughs> I like Grant Grant Hill. I just I hated Bobby Hurley, and I hate his brother even more now. That dude gets on my last nerves. I I hope to God UConn doesn't win at all. They're going to. I'm really good. They're really good. <laughs> anyway. Um, well, X beat them twice this year, so they've never beat yeah. Xavier. We'll just put it that way. They might win the NCAA tournament, but they'll never have that. <laughs> All right. Um, I have – so I have – what did I say? Grant Hill. Then I put on a guy who I also did not like because it was from that era, and I have grown to have a real appreciation for Bobby Hurley. I put him on there <laughs> because because he's a point guard. He was a point guard on that – on the – really really good teams that i think they won back-to-back -back national championships and they went like three years in a row or something like that um and he i one of the things i like most is that dream team documentary i don't know if you ever saw that bobby but oh yeah i've, I've watched it like 10 times and the story about the the when they brought all the college guys in and the first day the college guys whooped them and they turned the clock off before they let the media in to make sure nobody knew it and that kind of thing. And Larry Bird's being being a jerk to all the college guys on purpose and getting their heads and stuff. <laughs> um, but you know, the, the story is Bobby Hurley orchestrated that that college team and was just had 50 assists probably in that game, wow. from what I understand, and he was just unbelievable. Uh, so I'm throwing Bobby Hurley on there, love the point guard, of course. And then fourth, I'm going Shane Battier. I know he wasn't a huge score, but not would always seem to always knock down a three. There it is. Always knock down a three when it was needed. Like, you know, one of the best defensive players in college ever, probably. And, yeah. and then was a great defensive player in the NBA. I loved, loved, loved his toughness. He seemed like a super smart guy too, basketball wise and and otherwise. Um I don't know. I was just a big Shane Battier fan. Just loved the way he played. So no, no woes then. 
No. Didn't no Woj. No Woj. No, uh, no, no Trajan Langdon. Trajan Langdon. No. 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 Okay. Okay. Oh, oh man. There's some I good mean, ones. They're all on, this they're all on that list. All right. <laughs> I'm taking this one off. I I'm almost put Johnny Dawkins on there. Almost put, you know, uh, Mike Dunleavy Jr. I love Mike Dunleavy Jr. as well. Yep. Anyway. All right. So, Bobby, we're we're just a little bit older than you. Uh, so, I love, first off, Kyrie Irving would be a great one. Because Kyrie Irving, if he wouldn't have got hurt when he was there, that would have been, I think that could have been one of the greatest Blue Devils teams ever. Um, anyway. I got it. I mean, Jay Will. I love Jay Will. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here we go. Uh, he's got, I love that you have the Duke jersey on for this segment this is the greatest part of the I have, entire I have like two jerseys and this is I, I was like this is the reason to, this is the reason i always held on to it yes exactly i love that i still have three xavier jerseys that i couldn't put them on like you can but uh i i you, know, you just never know when you need to to pull out a pull out a jersey right i still got a james posey jersey and a and a uh gary lunkett guys that were they probably played before you were born. What are you, 20 what? 22, 23? No, I'm kidding. What are you? <laughs> 32. 32. All right. Yeah, it's seven years younger than me. A lot, lot younger than I. Oh, boy. Okay, <laughs> what's your back? <laughs> All right. I'm going Grant Hill. I love Grant Hill. I love Grant Hill, especially as an NBA player. But it, I feel like he was different than the other guys on that team back then. Uh, Jay Will is 100% on mine. That dude was – I mean, he was – player of the year and did it all Shane Battier was my next one because I at that time I was that's all I did on when I played basketball I just played defense and Shane Battier was nobody he stopped everybody it didn't matter if you were a point guard or a center he guarded all five positions and could guard all of them. I guess that's the point of it right he guarded all five positions and could guard all there you go how about that my last one though is Elton Brand. Elton Brand was the biggest son of a gun. He was one. Of, he was one of the most dominant players that I ever remember seeing at Duke. There are so many good Duke Blue Devils. It's not even funny. I mean, Julius Randall. I know that's. I'm sorry, Kentucky. That's Kentucky. Uh, what's the Jason guy who Taylor? plays? For Jason. There you go. And how about? Uh, I'm thinking of the other guy that plays at uh, for the Knicks. Uh, the guard. Um, come on, he's he was uh, the number two pick in the draft. J, uh, J, uh, R.J. Barrett. R.J. Barrett loved yeah. him in college too. R.J. Barrett was great. I, he's on your list, I'm sure. Martin Bagley, Julie Logan, Mari Parker, Nolan Smith, <laughs> Luke Kennard, Jason Tatum. Yeah. Anyway, plenty of them. I want to all. Hey, not didn't even get into the Plumley brothers. I mean, come on, you gotta love the Plumley <laughs> brothers, right? Hey, or the guy from Cincinnati. What's the kid's name from? Uh, Luke Kennard. Yeah, Luke Kennard. I mean, so many, so many. I mean, that's why Duke is who Duke is, because they just churn them out. Like, and to Bobby's point, Bobby Bobby mentioned, you know, he had Zion Williamson, the the only one and done guy, and then and I I sort of made a choice not to put any one and done guys, but I love Zion and Absolutely. Kyrie and those guys. Um, but Duke is one of those like. They're one of those programs that they, especially now, can have all these one and done guys because they're always going to get one of the best, one of the best two or three classes, recruiting classes in the country. But they also have a long list of really, really good players that stayed all four years. Yeah. Or, or maybe yeah. at least three. Or at least two or three. Yeah, yeah. stay there for a few years. Yeah. And I, yeah. I love that about Duke. I feel like that's one of the things that puts them a little over the top for me because I, I appreciate all the Kentuckys and Kansas and UCLA's and all those teams. The, the long, you know, the long lineage teams, you know, and I, I think I, I just put Duke a little bit ahead of those guys. And that's one of the reasons. And I love Coach K. Now that's how I, I, I contemplated putting Coach K on my list, <laughs> even though he never played ever for Duke. <laughs> anyway. It's the court. All right, now. Bobby, thank yeah. you so much. I, I, I appreciate the Duke. I keep looking up and seeing the Duke jersey. <laughs> I appreciate the thought that was put into it. Listen, the, the level, uh, has, the bar has been raised now for guest spots, and we've got to let Adam Bow know Bobby came with a jersey with a with a an outfit change in the middle of it. I'm gonna need I'm gonna need oh. Adam's uh, I'm gonna need Adam in his old elder in his old elder jersey. <laughs> yeah. uh, something. I'm gonna need something. I'm gonna need something out of it. 
Well, see, I used to cover before I covered the Reds. I covered uh, University of Kansas uh, basketball and lived in Lawrence, Kansas. So it was like you couldn't go outside and wear Duke things like without no. being heckled. So it's no. like I, I've been waiting years for a reason to, to wear the <laughs> for thing. an opportunity. <laughs> I'm staying safe. That's a good choice. That's, that's a good choice, especially in Kansas. Uh, uh, Bill Self, get better. Get better, Bill Self, uh, because that Kansas team, they were good. I uh, wish he was there. All right, buddy. Hey, uh, real quick, uh, besides the Enquirer, Cincinnati.com. Uh, is it Cincinnati.com? Yeah. Yep. Um, besides that, what's your tweet box thing? Do you still got a blue check? I think I, I lose it in a few days. I think that's uh, oh, is that a lot the new things. thing. What's up? I think so, yeah. Guy? This dude's hot. Listen, man. what do you got? What do you got to do to get one? Buy a Tesla? <laughs> it feels like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's like eighty dollars a year for one. Yeah, oh three, you can pay for one. That's it's eight dollars a month. You can pay to get a blue check, which doesn't make any sense. Now you don't know which. 100 LeBron James or LeBron James on there. I'm sorry. Come back to us real people, Bob. You don't need yeah. a blue check. <laughs> need a blue check. <laughs> now you literally will never know who anybody really is. Who's the real people out there? Anymore? Yeah. Then I heard that we already people. followed. I heard, so. I heard there'll be limits on like how much you can tweet per day. And like, you'll only be allowed one photo, one video per day. Um, I, saw, I saw a bunch of rumors out there about how much will, stuff will start changing next month. Andy so. Mack is going to struggle. There's an old Xavier guy named Andy Mack. He's just, he's an old feller and he's getting into the Twitter and it's seven tweets long because he <laughs> tweets his story out on Twitter. It's everybody's already going to Instagram and TikTok anyway. Why would he set, put these restrictions in and make everybody want to leave even more? I mean, that doesn't make any sense to me, but we can't do TikTok anymore either. We're going to take that away. China's everyone's watching, everyone's going back to MySpace and Facebook. There we go. I never had any of them. I never had MySpace or Facebook, but hey, I'm, I would I would get back on MySpace if it came back. <laughs> May have never left. I don't know. All right, Bobby, you've been we've kept you way too late. You got uh, you, you've only been home for a few days. Wife, kids, go do your thing. I can't tell you how much we appreciate you spending oh. this time with us, man. And really, really means a lot to us. And, and uh, good luck this season, Bob. Yeah, my pleasure. Hopefully, do it again soon. Oh yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Bobby. Appreciate it. Yep. See you guys. See you, Bobby. Bobby, Bobby, Bobby Mangel. Now, here's what we're going to do real quick. We're going to, as as Adam talks to you. Yeah. Oh, we're plugging back in. Huh? We're going We're going microphone transmission here right in the middle. It sounds yeah. so bad without them. You're right. Good call. Hopefully, this is a thousand times better. I our Bobby sounds good. Yep. Bobby sounds good and the guest sounds good, but until our uh, our our board operator learns how to how to hook up the board to a iPad, we're um, we're kind of SOL in that whole situation. Chris, <clears throat> got a little something for you. I know what time it is. I know what time it is. It is cool time. Number 1, thank you so much Bobby Nightingale, uh, Jr. Lot, uh, the guys, the guy does he, the, these guys, I mean, it's their job. I get it, but they're so intelligent when it comes to the, to the beat that they are on. They really, really do a great job. And, and we, we've got two good ones that come on with us. Um, super stoked to have them super stoked to have them on here. Yep. Adam, it's your move. I mean, came with the Jersey. Your move. I, your move. That's exactly right. And we got to get Adam back on uh, here pretty soon because there's a lot of transfer portal stuff already going down in college basketball. Uh, maybe when we figure out what our, uh, what the team's going to look like next year, we'll get Adam back on, see if he reps the Jersey or not. We'll find out. Um, yeah, but we're definitely going to make sure he knows about that. Chris, uh, speaking of, I mean, we might as well stick with that basketball theme that we finished on and talk about, who is in the final four? Okay. Are we going to do the Reese's We're during do, it? I think let's do that during. Okay. Let's do Reese's so. during. All right. So, let's do it. so then I'll, I'll, I'll bring this up here. So let's start this week. We're going to, we got some small ones here. So let's get through a couple of small ones. There's still a zillion Reese's things probably to do that we just have to find them. We're going to start with, let's go back to Christmas time. I like it. And we're going nutcrackers. Oh, the nutcracker. Now, let me tell you. Tiny let, nutcracker with the foil wrapper. Let me tell you 
Let me save your <laughs> save yeah. your worry here. Four million. Yeah. yeah. I, I'll save I'll save your worry here. There's no nuts in this. Oh, oh no. I okay. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm just, good. There. Just want to make sure you're good. Yeah. Um, very clear on on no. The only the only candy I like with a, with nuts in it is a Snickers. Yeah. And and I feel like. I feel like sunflower seeds are a candy to you. So <laughs> no, that's another one, actually. <laughs> so I'm going to say this. You may not believe me. I already don't. I have not had a sunflower seed in a week. I know. I feel my Just body. The Kramer there. Right? I, feel, yeah, I feel like my body um, is, is more pure right now, but not complete. A little I, cleaner, but I'm telling you, literally in the you. past week, I've lost five pounds. I've done nothing different. I just salt holding water or whatever that whole thing works. That might be a legit thing. I would say it is. <laughs> yeah, because I I put a lot of sodium in my body every day, but <laughs> a lot when it comes yeah. to those. That's me and sugar. But don't uh, have no fear. They'll they'll be back. I mean, I've got a long trip coming up. I, I didn't go out of town last week. And that's a big that's a big reason why uh, this week I'm going out of town Thursday. I can't make a drive to Toledo without having sunflower seeds or I'll fall asleep. Long so, drive. Yeah. It's the only way I can stay awake. All Shut right. Up. What do you think, Chris? You can go first this time. First mm. impression on the nutcracker, the, the mm. little tiny nutcracker, the hard chocolate. Um, is a little different than the regular Reese's that you normally get. It's a little too thick on the bottom. I think it's too thick chocolate, not enough peanut butter. Definitely not enough peanut butter. I need the Reese's peanut butter in these a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think I'm going to go with like a 9.5. Hmm. I was writing mine down <laughs> right before you said that. That definitely made me second guess myself because I put an 8.9. Oh, okay. I, still I mean, they're, really still, like- they're really good. Dude, to get under a nine, I feel like under a nine is bad. I, it, but you know, it's good though. Like you think about anything else, anything else in the world, a scale of one to ten, an eight point nine is amazing. That's a great scale. Yeah, you did great. I feel like that's a passing grade. But when I'm probably at an average score of like nine six, <laughs> nine seven, <laughs> it's not nine, very good. Doesn't sound very good. <laughs> second up, second, second deal up. It's kind of surprising we haven't done these yet, but. We've got the white chocolate miniatures. I got two of them for you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. You're welcome. All right. Uh, White chocolate minis. We've not done the white chocolate minis. No. We've done plenty of minis, but never the white chocolate minis. That's right. We've even done some mini minis. Yeah. The real tiny ones. That's right. Mm. Okay. Okay. The Jason Williams miniatures here. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now. Not Duke J. Williams. Mm-hmm. Florida J. Williams? Yeah. This, this is a good little fella right here. Uh-huh. Uh, I like the white chocolate. Uh, okay, Adam, first impressions. My first impression is 9-6. Yeah, I'm, I'm right with you. 9-6. I think you're right. I'm I'm staying right there with you. It's it's delicious. I love the white chocolate with the. We've had a couple other white chocolate mm-hmm. things. I love the white chocolate with the peanut butter. Yep, and they wrap it in foil, which doesn't give it the chemical taste. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that chemical taste on some of those was was overpowering in the plastic wrap. Yeah, I feel like that's chocolate anyway. But sometimes you just get chocolate that just tastes chemically. But mm-hmm. but Reese's mostly doesn't have that. Um, okay. We got a couple of them, a couple small ones knocked out. I really like the white chocolate. I, I got to go back to – that makes me want to go back to, like, the white chocolate eggs or something, like the bigger white chocolate with yeah. more peanut butter in it. Yep, more peanut butter. That, a little bit more peanut butter, and that's, that's a 9-8. That's a Easy. Maybe higher. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. All right. That was fun. Um, so we're going to talk about – we're talking – I mean, we've got the final, final four. four coming up this weekend. That's right. It took me a very long time to get that out. I, like, just real, <laughs> I just realized that I've got a baseball game scheduled for 6 o'clock on Saturday. <laughs> Who plays 
at six o'clock on Saturday. What game? There's, I mean, the first game's got to be six, right? It's like six and eight thirty, probably. Yeah, I think it is. Yep. Or like you know, you know, tournament time. So like six oh six and eight forty six or something like. Yeah, something exactly. Really something really eight forty nine. Yeah, something like that. Man, I'm surprised I haven't got a call from this other coach. <laughs> You're gonna have to make that call. I'm not making that call. I could Let's care. Move at this up. point in time, after what ha- I can't move it up. It's at my home field, and there's games at noon, two, and four. So then go eleven. I mean, the uh, games are two 10. hours long. Ten. Not going ten o'clock. What? Mm-mm. Not happening, bud. Right. Uh, it's gonna be too cold. Anyway. Sunday. 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 Cold. Sunday. I, I, no. Sunday. I, I Sunday, don't, Sunday. I don't. I, I don't. I. I've already you scheduled it. I already got an umpire. Sunday. Already got an umpire. It's FAU San Diego State. Can you first off FAU and San Diego State? One of these two have to go. Are going to the Play NCAA championship. championship? FAU, Florida Atlantic, or or San Diego State. San Diego State was a good team. San Diego State. I mean, this Florida Atlantic team won't go away. No, they won't. George Mason. Yeah. Speaking of George Mason. The other final four is Miami and UConn, and they've got the old George Mason coach in Miami that's been there for like 15 years or something now. It's been that long since George, George Mason had that first run. Yeah. It's unbelievable to me. They were, I think somebody said he had been, he's there, been there for uh, like 17 years. Does that sound right? It hasn't been that long, has mm. it? 12 years. Maybe it was 12 years. Wasn't he somewhere in between those two places too? I thought he went from George Mason straight to Miami, kind of took – kind of rode the coattails of that of that I, run i thought he went somewhere big and then i thought he some, went somewhere even maybe bigger than miami um i can't i i can't think of it now but um or maybe i'm thinking of somebody else i don't know but i his son no he went uh george mason that was uh 2000 he was there from 90 he was at george mason from he was at bowling green from 86 to 97 okay and then he was at uh, he went to George Mason from 97 to 2011, and he's been at Miami ever since. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Assistant at Davidson uh, and an assistant at Virginia back in the 70s and 80s. Wow. Oh, I wonder if he coached Ralph Sampson uh, at Virginia. Okay. 79 through 86 at Virginia. Sampson would have been earlier than that, right? Uh, no, I think he was well, that right time. there, early 80s. Yeah, I guess you're right. Okay. So, Florida Atlantic or San Diego State? I mean, who do you like? God, this Have is you- such a weird – this is so weird. We've got a four, two fives, and a nine in the, in the NCAA tournament, final four. And Xavier had to pick one of the worst time to, to, to play uh, a game. This could easily be Xavier. This was Xavier's year, man. This was the year. If they just had – if if free if ah, does there's no ifs doesn't matter ifs don't matter ifs don't matter didn't happen uh, didn't Not make shots when guys, we need man. to Not with seven guys hey man. I mean and when you're really only playing six honestly I mean you can call it seven but when your seventh guy is only playing you know nine minutes you're playing six guys yeah you're playing six guys right. um all right so let's do this um I I got to go San Diego State. I mean, I, I know the 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 big pick's going to be Florida Atlantic, but I'm going to go San Diego State. You think so? Mm-hmm. I mean, San Diego State's the favorite. I realize they're the favorite, but right now, like the the Cinderellas are so much fun that first weekend. And then usually it's like, all right, we talked about this last week. All right, now it's time for the Blue Bloods to come in. Now we want to see good basketball. That's over. <laughs> That's all gone. Because <laughs> there's, I mean. No one left outside of – I mean, you'd call UConn that, but UConn has not been UConn for 10 years. Right. I mean, until the last couple of years, they've been, they've been better. Um, and UConn looks like the best team. They've been the best team in this tournament. Yeah. I, I thought Texas and them look like the two best teams in this tournament. Totally. And then Texas loses somehow. Uh, I, I, yeah. So here we are. And then um, Kansas State was super exciting. And, and yeah. uh, what's his name? Noel. Uh, no, Noel. Noel was he, he still might win uh tournament player of the year, whatever they call yeah, it. Player player of the tournament or whatever, yeah. MVP of the tournament. That kid, I'm gonna tell you right now, that kid is going to be an NBA point guard and he is going to lead the league in assists at some point in time. 
He's very exciting. Such a great passer at the to, to the passes he's making at the collegiate level. You move on. You move on with more better athletes and 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 things like that. And and the stuff he's doing at this level looks like it translates perfectly to a NBA pure point guard. He he set the record for most assists in a tournament game in the Sweet Sixteen with nineteen assists. Nineteen in that game. assists and. I thought exactly that same thing. If this is an NBA game, he's get, he's got at least 25 assists. Yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent. And he can shoot and he can shoot. I mean, he's he pulled, quick. He can get now, to the rim. he also does what some NBA guy players do too, where they pull up some bad shots. really bad shots. And I text you a couple of times. I don't even know if you're watching it. I was just like, that's a terrible shot. That was terrible. Yeah. There's a, a few just horrible, horrible shots, but, when you are that guy, I get it. You get that little heat check thing. You feel a certain way. There's a certain amount of confidence that comes with the way you got to where you are. And when you feel like you can't miss, sometimes you take a bad shot. Yeah. And coach, that's why coaches let a lot of that go because, you know what, if you're feeling that great, you might take a bad shot, but that bad, as long as that bad shot pulls you back. And then it did. He, he, he hit a three from – twice the NBA three that brought rain as high as he shot it from came down, chucked another one up and it was horrible. And then he had two straight assists after that. Yeah. That's what I love. It's like, okay, oops, I got you. He even, he was looking at his team hitting himself. That's on me, on me, on me. And then two straight assists right afterwards. Mm-hmm. And like no look missiles from the top of the key to the block. Like that is, I mean, you're throwing right through everybody, all traffic. And oh, it's um, uh, the kid is the kid was fun to watch. I I you know my favorite part of basketball is passing. So anytime there's a great passer, I I see a new great passer, I fall in love immediately. Tyler Kolick a few weeks ago, I I I saw I finally got to really watch him play. I was like left-handed point guard, great passer. Are you yep. kidding me? That's yeah. that's my all, I, that I adore him. Yep. And then Marquise Noel, mm-hmm. same thing. You know who my favorite college basketball player in the entire world is? Maybe my new favorite player total? Marquise Noel? No. Oh, who? Caitlin Clark. Oh, yeah. She's unbelievable. She is uh she has been on everything. ESPN constantly and all, she's yeah. I I started I got to see her finally play a couple weeks ago like in the conference tournament I think for the first time actually sit down and watch a game. <clears throat> I was blown away, blown away. She's a better passer than Marquise Noel. I'm telling you, and she can shoot and she's a smart player. I, I, it just, I mean, she's not much of a defender. It seems like so far, but she, I think in the first, so they played in the elite eight uh, against Louisville and Haley Van Liff and, and that team Yep, uh, the other day. And she had, I think in the first quarter, she accounted for 23 of the 25 points between points and assists, or, or like, I, I want to say maybe like 38 or their 41 in the first half or something like that. Yeah. It was like 98% of their points were from her assists or her scoring. It's, oh my God. The list of awards that she has just from this year are a mile long. It and that, be. and that doesn't even include the, the finalist things she was a finalist for that haven't been pulled yet. Right. Like the Naismith and things like that. Unbelievable. The one that I love the best about this athletic national, uh, what was it? The athletic national player of the year. Where'd it go? Here it is. 2022, 2023 academic all America. That's of there the year. Go. That's I love that. That's gotta you know, be a student. Yep. Gotta be a student. First team, all American um, unanimous first team, all American by associated press. Like this, she's, yeah, she's so good. I mean, even just the passes that she feeds the post, they've got a, they've got a pretty decent post Yeah, and they've got like this rapport. I mean, she, she, not only is she making passes in tight windows and she's throwing missiles, she's, she's hitting people like you, you don't see them open and she's hitting them and she's hitting them like so that their hands are catching the basketball exactly where they have to be to score immediately. Like it's that's the, so that's the whole thing, right? That's, that's what I liked about Noel is those no look missile passes. He was thrown were hitting guys right 
in the chest or, or, you know, what do they call that? Their shooting pocket, right? Where you catch that ball and can go straight up with it. And, and yeah, I have not seen, I've, I've seen highlights with, with Caitlin. Uh, I haven't seen any of her games. I've seen highlights. She's averaging oh. 8.6 assists a year. That's insane in women's basketball because the scoring's not what it is on. And, and it's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. She's so good. Yeah. I love watching her play. They're in the final four. What's the big girl, the, the, uh, uh South Carolina's, um, big, she's, she's the most dominant player in, yeah. in college basketball. Yeah. I don't know. I can't remember her names, but that, the, the South Carolina's big down low is that girl is as dominant a player as I've seen. I mean, I watched the highlight, a 10 minute highlight reel of her just, she can go back to the basket. She can face you up. She can do anything. The, I mean, there's been – who was the girl from Oregon? Uh, Recently? Last year, two years ago maybe. Oh, Sabrina Unesco. Yes. Oh, my God. Just so many unbelievable, unbelievably talented women that, that are coming out of college basketball that can straight ball. I, I mean, I'm going out on a limb and saying if she – enters the NBA draft after this season. I don't even know which – I'm I'm not even sure what she is. She's a freshman. You're talking about Caitlin? Caitlin Clark, yeah. Um, I just had her pulled up. If if she enters the NBA – She's WNBA, a junior. She's a junior. So she can, she can play next year in the WNBA. If she does, she might be the best player in the WNBA next year. That's saying a lot because there's some really good there's ball players. Really there's some good really players. good players in yes. the NBA. Uh, but I, it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me. She's so, so good. Um, anyway, that's my, that's my big, uh, college basketball take. Oh, um, so you've got, uh, you've got San Diego state and then you have between Miami and UConn. I gotta tell you, I, I mean, my heart's not with it. I want Miami to win that game, but, uh, but if I just, you, if you're not the national championship, are you like Xavier beat them twice this year? Oh, hundred percent. I'm going to, I'm going to puff my chest out and everything like that. hundred percent. But if this little Hurley dude, like, I mean, I like Bobby Hurley better. I mean, I, Bobby, I like Bobby Hurley. If you compare him to, to his brother, is it Danny Hurley? Whatever his name is. This dude is, he's like, got me like Mick Cronin. He's like an, he's an annoying little piss ant to me. Hmm. And I don't know if it's because he had a technical in both games that there was no reason for him to be stomping around and, and, and crying like the way he was. And I don't, there's no reason for that uh, okay. to me. You know what I mean? When you're, when you're the coach of the game, they, I mean, the first game, we only beat them by four or five and that I'm boom hit both free throws when he got the technical foul. And it was with like four minutes left in the game. I mean, you could have lost that game for your, that could totally, I mean, it totally swayed how everything was going. It's stupid. And, and over nobody even realized, I don't even know what he was complaining about. Just start stomping around and whining and screaming. And it's like, Mick quit, dude, quit quit <laughs> well all right anyway I, but yes i think uconn's gonna win that game uh i i hope miami does i like jim laranaga laranaga uh, he just seems like he's a seems like you know a good old grandpa kind of guy and it seems like his teams always come out and play for him they're always good they're not you don't ever hear like oh miami's having a downtime no, miami's their, their basketball program is always good they're not always great but they're always they're always good yeah, and, and they get hidden in the ACC. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you talk about Duke and Carolina and all those guys, but yeah. um, so you don't think about Miami a whole lot in that Syracuse conference. But they, they compete. All those teams that are in they there compete now. every year in all those games that they play against absolutely all those really tough teams. Absolutely. All right. Well, I, I you know Who what you got. I'm going to go opposite both games. Let's go Florida Atlantic Miami in the national championship game. All right, Florida Atlantic national champions. Oh my god. <clears throat> That'd be the end of college basketball <laughs> and college basketball doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> uh, or yeah. everybody thinks they can win a national championship now. See, and that's because the other thing too, because they can. And that's the other thing that, that I kind of don't like about this is um, you have, when you, when you look at the national champions over however long, right. There might be a four seed in there somewhere, or a three seed, but for the most part, you're getting, like we said, 50, 56% of final fours have been a one or a two seed and there's none in the final four this year, but it always seems like those are the, one of those, like, like it's crowning the, the national champion. And there is nobody that can convince me that any of these four teams 
are the best teams in college basketball. It's it's the it's the biggest flaw probably and the most exciting part about the NCAA tournament. It's a one and out. You only get yeah. one chance to yeah. win every game. And there's as soon as one you lose shining moment. Yeah. You gotta you gotta win whatever it is, eight games or whatever, six games. Yeah. And and you if you lose one of those, there's only one team that does it. That's the way it goes. Yeah. I don't know. I, I guess out of out of all those teams, at least UConn was ranked in the top one or two throughout in the season at some point in time. So so at least maybe if if UConn can do it. They're the only – they're the highest seed left in this thing. It, at least then it will feel like, okay, you know, there's some – we had some craziness in a few brackets, but, but you know, one of the top ten teams in the country won. Yeah. Yeah. I'm – you know, <laughs> I hope for good games and I don't have a dog in the fight, so whatever happens, let's let's yeah. go. I was really hoping Texas would be, would win it all after we lost to Texas because that their defense was incredible. They were really good defensively. Thank Very you. good defensively. And 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 you know it's so crazy because when you get played so hard like that, you can tell Xavier's tired because that back cut never happened. You're getting overplayed. That back cut is wide open so often. And we I mean, we hit it maybe three times in the game, maybe. But it's like it's there constantly or catch the ball and drive immediately. Those guys are pre- they were past us. We catch the ball and they're jumping past us. That's an open lane. But we just seen you could just tell we they were did, tired. They did and such they, a good job of, of yeah, helping and rotate. Exactly. Just, exactly. Just into the ball. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. All right. Enough of me being I was so. To, so do you want to hear? So here's what happened. So I go we go to my friend's house and. and we had the schedule to go over to their house and hang out. Uh, kids hang out. You know, we we hang out, play some play some Tetris game or something. I don't know. And I got my phone sitting on the table watching the watching the game. Okay. And they're like, "Oh yeah, we I think we've got it figured out so you can watch the Xavier game." And I'm like, "All right, cool, cool. That sounds good. We'll figure it out." Yeah, exactly. That's what I said <laughs> immediately. That's what I said. And then the kids take over the the main TV. So. I'm watching, I'm watching the first game on my phone on the table while we're playing some board game. Can't remember who was the first game that day. It was a floor. I think it was Florida Atlantic. And uh, so they don't have, they don't have TV. They don't have any kind of TV streaming, nothing, no antennas, no nothing. But they take their phones and just kind of swipe it up to the TV, right? So, but only one of their TVs do it, and it's the TV in the playroom where they have bean bags and mini tiny chairs like you had in first grade at your desk. If you take all those and put them in the center of the room and just sit on that pile, <laughs> I, I, I got on my streaming, threw it up on the TV. And I, I stood because I'm the rest of them laid on the ground like the other parent. The kids are in the other room watching a movie and there's three adults sitting on the floor. On a bean leaning against the beanbag or whatever, in a room filled with toys. And that's why I'm watching the first half of this game. So I'm I, like, I not the right spot for me to be for the way that first half went. It was not a good place. It was not. I was not in a good place. Like stuff was not good. I'm not throwing things. I'm not yelling. I'm not, you know, here I might be kind of a whole lot of hat. I do a lot of taking the hat off and slamming it against my leg or slamming my hat on the ground. Like I use my hat. My poor hats get beat up when I'm getting upset, but I'm being kind of quiet and everybody's in there is being really quiet because Xavier's getting beat. And like, they all know, like, that's what that's your, Okay, well, one reason we're even watching this right now is because Chris is here. Otherwise, they'd probably be, I don't know, playing Uno or something uh, during the Elite Eight or Sweet 16. Shout out to Uno. Yeah. Uh, so then this kid comes down and throws up a prayer at half and banks it in. And as soon as it went in, I turn. It's, you know, what is it that point? It's probably 11 o'clock, 11.15. I turn and I just yell. Let's go. Come on. Shoes on. It's time. We're out. Let's go. I didn't even, there was nothing. I was, I just immediately, he made that shot 
all three of them looked up at me and I'm like, are you kidding? It's time. Let's go guys. Let's go. Everybody out. Let's go. We're packing up. I was not doing that the rest of the night right there. There was no chance. Uh, and then I had people calling me on the way home. Hey, Hey, you want to come over and watch the second half? Come on. It'll be okay. We want to come on. No, nope, nope, not right now. I apologize. I love all of you guys. Not happening. Going home, sat in my chair, watched the rest. I watched the whole game. I watched every second of that game. I watched Cam Craft come into that game at the end. And uh, I, 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 it was, it was tough, buddy. It was tough. That was, it just felt like, come on, you got to have a run in you. Get this thing under 10, at least make it competitive. Mm -hmm. But I sat there. And so I tell people, I watched the game on my phone. Legit, that's how it was. It was on my phone. I get to throw it on the TV, but on my phone in kids' playroom with beanbag chairs and first grade sitting chairs. And other people that didn't care about it. Uh, the dad cared about it, just not like he cares about basketball. He likes, you know, he does all the stuff, you know, big sports guy. But it, I mean, obviously, I mean, it didn't mean any, that game didn't mean anything. So at that point, that, that he's not, they're none of them were Xavier fans. They just know how big of a Xavier fan I am. Yeah. And, 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 and I don't mean this in any bad way towards my love. These guys they are great friends of mine. And I will, you know, we'll go over there all the time, but it was, it just wasn't the setting. The setting yeah. wasn't right. I completely understand the that setting wasn't right when you, especially when it's your team mm -hmm. and especially when things aren't going well. Yeah. You, you want to kind of be by yourself mostly they, or they could have came to my house. They could have came to my house and, that t I would have my TV then I would be sitting on my couch I would have all my stuff there and at that point I don't care who else is there is because I'm in my place I don't care you know as long as everybody's being as long as I can hear the TV don't be I'll <laughs> turn the iPad down turn that turn you to I'll tell you to quiet down because when Xavier's on I want to listen to what they have to say I love listening to the color right that that's my I, it, you get a little something extra that way just but you're here. Well, you can be at my house, but I was not in the right place. And I literally, I feel, I kind of feel bad. I never apologized to him, but I literally, the second that ball went in, I was just like, that's it. Come on, we're leaving. It's time to go. And nobody said a word. They all kids jumped up, put their shoes on from the other room. Like they were just, all right, thanks. See you guys. You know, it was very awkward on the way out. Nobody wanted to talk to me really. And I'm just <laughs> irritated 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 uh so hard anyway i and i didn't even play so i feel bad for the guys who had to play because jack nunji missed like he was three of 11 at one point in time and just couldn't make a shot and it's possibly could be a senior he still has a year of eligibility left somehow he's a six-year player and still has a year of eligibility left what he was granted an extra year of eligibility he requested because he was injured for two years at, at iowa half of two seasons he requested an extra year of eligibility he got that this was it so so he got that plus his covid year so he could play seven years of college basketball yeah that's that's ridiculous you, that, he's not i don't think it's not going to happen he's going to no, go I think he already said he wasn't going to, right yeah it not or, he didn't 100 percent say it but it feels like i mean he's married uh, his wife's he's going to graduate. He's going to get his grad degree because he's a grad student now. He's going to get his his graduate degree or whatever that is. He, it's it's going to it's going to happen. Uh, he's and he's going to go overseas. He can play overseas somewhere. He'll be able to go overseas and make some make some decent money. His wife, who knows what she is. She was a volleyball player at Iowa. So she got a degree and she'll be able to do something. He's I, he's he's more than likely gone. But. Somehow he still has another year of eligibility. That's insane. Yeah, that's a crazy part about all this. You got all these seniors and, and grad transfers and all that that get that extra year of, of eligibility with COVID. Plus, he was granted. Like, apparently people put in for this all the time. And they only grant, like, one every year to people and allow somebody. Like, it's not. It's very seldom that the NCAA will give you another year. Hmm. And he was able to get one. Wow. Yeah. Man, well, thirty-four years old, <laughs> fourth like to, year senior. I wonder how or old. seventh year senior. Yeah, I wonder how old he actually is. Anyway, uh, besides the point, I apologize <laughs> for getting off on that tangent. No, There's no reason good. for it. Um, 
we what talk- else we got i didn't listen i didn't watch the comedy segment i apologize okay. we're, we're you know and i was really excited about the foosball girl and we'll get back to the foosball girl we'll we'll we'll, we'll do some foosballing next week yeah kelsey cook's gonna be there kelsey cook the the special's not going anywhere it's on youtube if you want to watch it, what was it called uh the hustler the hustler that's right the foosball hustler so if you want to watch it with us uh i'm giving you an extra week there you're giving go. you an extra week kelsey cook the hustler uh so we need a, a mount rushmore um oh yeah it's your turn to do mount oh, rushmore right. too yeah 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 um, do you have one yep I've oh, got one. He does. Uh, the Mount Rushmore of Aaron's old stuffed animals. Oh, 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 oh buddy. That's an easy one. Actually, the, the Aaron's old, what's old stuffed animal consider? Like, is it, is it from grade school? Like you go back to like high school. Like if you got something in high school, would that count? Would that be an old stuffed animal? If you've been, if you graduated over 20 years ago, you acquiring new stuffed animals in high school. Yeah. I won her a Scooby-Doo when we were in high school. Okay. Okay. I mean, something like that, <laughs> that, that would count. Something like that would count um you know what we're doing the mount rushmore of stuffed animals i've got my top one piece of two my top two already done already done we're doing it i'm my top two stuff that they're, they're the greatest two stuffed animals ever <laughs> this is gonna be so funny <laughs> <laughs> they have names both my stuffed animals have names. one of yeah, them have actually names. one of them had no one of them was a name that was on the tag this is a great, I'm going to bring them. I still little, have them. little tights. I still have my, my all time favorite stuffed animal from when I was a little, little, little dude. I think I do too. I, I have, have it. Mine too. I have it. I'm bringing him with me. I don't think I have the other one. It was actually one that my sister got that was like, became a, a household uh, favorite that everybody talked about all the time. Cause we fooled my mom into thinking it was a real animal when, we, when she brought it home. Wow. <laughs> yeah. All right, oh, be, man. So I got to go from there. Going from there is going to be, it's going to be rough from there. But I got, I've got two hundred percent ready to go. Yeah, I'm I've so got, excited. I just I want to start talking a, about them right now. I know. I think I've got a number one. Oh man, I didn't even think. Wait a minute now. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Do stuffed animals? I mean, we're talking about just a stuffed animal, like, or or can this be like action partially? Figures? No, 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 no. Can this be like partially stuffed, partially robotic kind of a thing? Did you have a taxidermied former pet or something? No, like Teddy <laughs> Rupskin or Teddy or Grubby. Yeah, I, that I think that counts. Would yeah. that count? I would feel like that counts as a stuffed animal, even though you put a tape in the back of That's it. Okay. Yeah, he was plush. Yeah, okay. That, so Teddy Rupskin, Grubby, those are good ones too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Grubby was my dude, man. A little yeah. grub worm. Yeah, that yeah. was my dude. We had the we had the blankets, the bedding. Uh, the Did Teddy you have Teddy Rupskin bl- bedding? Wow, nice. Yeah, I don't remember a show for Teddy Rupskin. I uh, don't remember the cartoon. I, I had the stuffed animal. Vaguely do, thing. but I remember more of the stuffed animal. Yeah, and it had a tape put in the back, and it would start talking. It would tell the story or whatever. There was a day I remember somehow, I don't know, I must have been five or something. Yeah. And I I put in that t- one of the tapes or whatever that you got with it. And I listened to it and there was like a like a really sad song that one of the characters sang on this tape. <laughs> and I I was sitting on our steps, you know, our steps in, yeah. in, in the house. Yeah, I was sitting on where, the where at on the landing on the, the top on, top. I the think I was top. on like the third or fourth step. Oh, from the bottom. From the bottom. Okay, okay. I want to say great, great steps for uh, sliding down with with an exercise mat. Yeah. Absolutely. I uh, I want to say somebody like Aunt Sue was over. Maybe even could have even been your mom. Somebody was over. I feel like it was just my mom, one of her sisters, and me there for some reason. That's that's the only people I remember. And I was listening to, I mean, we had, the, I played with the Teddy Ruxman all the time. We yeah. listened to things for whatever reason, there was some slow, sad song. And I was just by myself on the steps, crying, <laughs> listening to it. And then they came in and they're like, oh my God, what's wrong? Like, it's just a sad song. <laughs> I don't know how I remember that. I, even... I vividly remember that moment. It's crazy. That's insane. Yeah, that is awesome. I love every bit of that. Yeah. Uh, can you? I wonder if you can look up. And to this day, I'll I'll hear an either a very beautiful song or a sad song 
No, I'll shed a little tear. I just want to know if anything, anything would possibly come up if you typed it in. <laughs> oh, I don't know. To find this just sad song. song. Just, just just Teddy sad, Ruxpin. Teddy Ruxpin sad song. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if one would come up or not. Uh, there's a Billy Ocean song called There'll Be Sad Songs. There you go. <laughs> I can't I don't have the the thing to play. You know what? Me. That might be a perfect thing to have for next week. Let's do it next week. All right, I'll figure it out next week because I don't have the adapter. God, who's in charge of this soundboard? I the producer, what is he on like six weeks of vacation? Oh my now? god, I feel it's like six years. <laughs> it's about five or so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On that note, we'll we'll we're gonna do next week's gonna be Kelly Clarkson, uh, foosball hustler. <laughs> yeah. Kelsey Clark, is that right? <laughs> Close. You're oh, mixing, Clark. You're mixing <laughs> Caitlin Clark, Caitlin and Clark. Kelsey Cook. <laughs> but Caitlin, Cl- Caitlin Clark cooks. So there you I go. Get it. And Kelly Clarkson just fits right in with all of them. So oh, she Kelly Clarkson. She doesn't fit anywhere now. Oh, that's oh, come Clark's on, son. Adam. Come yeah. on. Oh, oh. no. That was, uh, that was rough, but I just got <laughs> it was that. really bad. That was, was really bad. I listened to it was all good. To, it was all good until you said, Oh, just <laughs> I listened to mean comedy podcasts all day long, yes, every day. Yes. I think they talk, rubbing off. I just I'm just kidding, Kelly. Thank you for listening as always. And uh I, I didn't mean I was Man, just well, she was supposed to come on the show next week. Not gonna happen now. Oh, I didn't realize our bookers got her. Yeah. Well, that's all right. She's not going to wear a Duke jersey in the middle of it. I no, she that. will not. Not like our man uh, Bobby Nightingale Jr. did today. Great job. Do we just call him Bobby Nightingale? Can I stop calling him Jr.? Probably. Okay. I'm going to do that. Yeah. I'm going to kill the Jr. If you're, if you're, there's no, if you call him Bobby, there's no confusion between he and his dad. He's Bob. Right. It's Bob Nightingale Jr. and Bobby Nightingale. Or Bob, Bob Nightingale, Nightingale, Bobby Nightingale. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. Uh, all right. Yeah, that sounds good. So uh, Mount Rushmore of stuffed animals. Well done. I've looked in around this room so many times and found things. That's brand new to the room, though. So uh, know, it's usually on the outside that. of the room. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so congratulations on that. Uh, and yeah. And then and then Kelsey Cook. Kelsey Cook. Thank you. I almost said Kelly Clarkson again. Uh, Kelsey <laughs> Cook, foosball hero. And uh, on you on YouTube. And until next time, don't forget to turn your headlights on.